George was a taxi driver on the night shift. He had been driving for over twenty years, and he had seen it all. He had driven drunk people, drug addicts, and even criminals. But he had never seen anything like the passenger he picked up that night. George was driving down a deserted street when he saw a man standing on the sidewalk. The man was fat and short, with pale skin and cold eyes. He was wearing a black hat and a black coat. George pulled over and asked the man if he needed a ride. The man nodded and got into the taxi. George looked at the man in the rearview mirror. The man was staring at him with cold, dead eyes. Where to? George asked. The man didn't answer. He just kept staring at George. George started to feel uneasy. He had a bad feeling about this passenger. I said, where to? George asked again. The man finally spoke. His voice was deep and raspy. To the end of the line, the man said. George didn't know what the man meant, but he started driving anyway. George drove for what felt like hours. The man in the back seat just sat there, staring at him. George started to get scared. He wanted to pull over and let the man out, but he was too afraid. George finally came to a stop at a dead end. This is the end of the line, George said. The man in the back seat smiled. So it is, the man said. The man opened the door and got out of the taxi. He stood at the end of the road, looking out at the darkness. George rolled down his window. Do you need anything else? he asked. The man turned to look at George. His eyes were now glowing red. Yes, the man said. I need your soul. George screamed and slammed on the brakes. The taxi screeched to a halt. George looked in the rearview mirror, but the man was gone. George looked out the front window. The road was empty. George took a deep breath and tried to calm down. He thought he must have imagined the whole thing. But then he saw it. There was a drop of blood on the back seat. George drove back to the taxi depot in a daze. George went home and went to bed, but he couldn't sleep. He kept seeing the man's red eyes in his nightmares. The next day, George went back to work, but he wasn't the same. He was paranoid and afraid. He kept looking over his shoulder, expecting to see the man. One night, George was driving down the same street where he had picked up the man. He saw a figure standing on the sidewalk. It was the man. George slammed on the brakes, but it was too late. The man had stepped in front of the taxi. Next story. Hani was a pharmacist on the night shift at a local drugstore. She had been working there for over a year, and she knew the store like the back of her hand. One night, Hani was working alone. The store was empty, and it was very quiet. Hani was starting to feel a little bit bored. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. Hani was surprised. She didn't expect any customers at this time of night. Hani went to the front door and opened it. A man was standing there. He was wearing a black hoodie and sunglasses. Can I help you? Hani asked. 
Yes, the man said. I need some medicine. The man followed Hani into the store. He told her that he needed some pain medication for a headache. Hani went to the back of the store and got the pain medication. She brought it back to the man and gave it to him. Thank you, the man said. How much do I owe you? Hani told the man how much he owed her. The man paid her and then left the store. Hani watched the man walk away. She had a bad feeling about him. She didn't know why, but she felt like he was dangerous. Hani went back to the pharmacy counter and started to clean up. She was still feeling uneasy about the man. Suddenly, Hani felt dizzy. She sat down in the chair behind the counter. Hani's vision started to blur. She tried to stand up, but she couldn't. She collapsed to the floor. The man from before came back into the store. He was carrying a syringe. The man knelt down next to Hani and injected her with something. Hani felt a sharp pain in her arm. The man stood up and walked away. Hani tried to scream, but she couldn't. She was too weak. Hani's vision went black. Hani woke up in a dark room. She was lying on a cold, hard floor. Hani tried to move, but her hands and feet were tied. She couldn't see anything, but she could smell the musty odor of an old basement. Hani started to panic. She didn't know where she was or why she was there. Suddenly, Hanny heard a noise. She opened her eyes and saw a figure standing in the doorway. It was the man from the drugstore. Hello, honey, the man said. My name is James. I'm the one who kidnapped you. Hani screamed, but no one could hear her. Don't scream, honey, James said. It's not going to do you any good. James walked over to Hani and knelt down next to her. He reached out and touched her face. You're a very pretty girl, Hani, James said. I'm glad I found you. Hani tried to spit in James's face, but he pulled away. Don't be like that, Hani, James said. I'm not going to hurt you. James stood up and walked away. He left the door open behind him. Hani could hear James's footsteps moving away. She was all alone. Hani started to cry. She didn't know what to do. She was scared and alone. Hani didn't know it, but she was in James's basement. James was a serial killer. He had kidnapped and killed several women before. Hani was James's next victim. Next story. Jimmy was a bartender on the night shift at a dive bar called The Bloodsucker. The bar was known for its cheap drinks and its clientele of rough-and-tumble characters. Jimmy didn't mind the clientele. He was used to dealing with all sorts of people, and he was good at his job. He could make a drink to anyone's liking, and he was always up for a conversation. One night, a group of new customers came into the bar. They were all dressed in black, and they had a pale and gaunt appearance. Jimmy guessed that they were vampires. Jimmy wasn't scared. He had been working at the bloodsucker for long enough to know that vampires were just like everyone else. They just needed 
a little blood to survive. Jimmy went over to the group of vampires and asked them what they would like to drink. We'll have a round of blood, one of the vampires said. Jimmy nodded and went to the back of the bar to get the blood. He poured each of the vampires a glass of blood and brought it back to them. The vampires drank their blood eagerly. When they were finished, they looked up at Jimmy and smiled. Thank you, one of the vampires said. That was delicious. You're welcome, Jimmy said. Is there anything else I can get for you? No, we're fine, the vampire said. We'll just sit here and enjoy our drinks. Jimmy nodded and walked back to the other side of the bar. He watched the vampires as they talked and laughed. They seemed to be enjoying themselves. Jimmy continued to serve the vampires' drinks for the rest of the night. They were good customers, and they always tipped well. Jimmy started to get curious about the vampires. He wanted to know more about them. So, Jimmy said to one of the vampires, What brings you to my bar tonight? The vampire looked at Jimmy and smiled. We're just looking for a place to relax and have a few drinks, he said. I see, Jimmy said. Well, you're welcome to come back any time. The vampire nodded. We will, he said. Jimmy and the vampires talked for a while longer. Jimmy learned that their names were Victor, Vlad, and Nadia. They were all over a thousand years old, and they had traveled all over the world. The vampires became regulars at the bar. They would come in every night and sit at the same corner table. They would always order the same drinks. And they would always talk and laugh for hours on end. Jimmy enjoyed talking to the vampires. They were intelligent and well-spoken. They could talk about anything from history to philosophy to current events. Jimmy started to feel like the vampires were his friends. He trusted them, and he felt safe around them. One night, Jimmy was working alone at the bar. The vampires came in and sat at their usual table. Jimmy went over to them and took their order. We'll have a round of blood, Victor said. Coming right up, Jimmy said. Jimmy went to the back of the bar to get the blood. When he came back, he saw that the vampires were standing over him. What are you doing? Jimmy asked. The vampires smiled. We're going to have to feed. Victor said. Jimmy gasped in horror. He tried to run, but the vampires were too fast. They grabbed him and held him down. Victor sank his fangs into Jimmy's neck. Jimmy screamed in pain. Vlad and Nadia also sank their fangs into Jimmy's neck. Jimmy's blood flowed freely into their mouths. Jimmy felt himself getting weaker and weaker. He knew that he was going to die. Jimmy's throat had been torn out, and his body was drained of blood. Jimmy was a retired vampire. As a huge support, please hit like, subscribe, and maybe share your thought or any experience before going to watch another video. Thank you so much. Have a good day.